my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have all. We are almost. All, we have finished. We have almost finished doing all the math problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, if you're looking, if, if you want to watch the solutions of the problems, you will find the solutions from day number 251 to 400. As I said, we are almost finished doing all the problems from here. This book happens to contain, in vast majority of cases, over 90% of the problem in this book are the exact same problems, and in most cases, in almost all cases, appearing on the exact same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. We are, we are done doing all the problems from this book. As I said, if you want to watch the original solutions, you will find them from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of doing some quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Quantitative comparison questions are very important. They are still a big part of the, of, the, of the revised GRE. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us enough practice problems. Because of that, from day number 401, we began solving some quantitative comparison questions out of this one. And right now, we are on page number 241. Please turn to it. Page number 241, problem number 1. Problem number 1, is, being problem number 1, is pretty straightforward and simple. So simple, in fact, that when it was given, 85% of people had no trouble with it. We are being asked to compare 4 fifth plus 2 eleventh, 2 eleventh versus 1. Well, there are two ways we can go about it. One way actually is to actually do it out in the classical way, but these questions are called quantitative comparison. These are not called computations. So if, but if you hell bent on computing it, you can compute it because it's only number one. It's not going to take actually that long to compute it. But the other way, the quicker way, the most straightforward way in my opinion, the intuitive way to look at this problem is to understand that 2 over 11, we know that 2 tenths, we know that 2 tenths is same as 1 fifth. 2 tenths we know is same as 1 fifth. Therefore, we should realize that 2 11, whatever, 2 11, whatever it is, it's got to be just a little under 1 fifth. It's something, it's going to be something less than 1 fifth. This is how we write something less than 1 fifth with a minus sign on top of it. So we have this quantity which is 4 fifth plus another quantity which is just a little under 1 fifth. 4 fifth plus something little under 1 fifth, 4 fifth plus something little under 1 fifth, it's going to be less than 1. The answer is A. Because we know 4 fifth plus 1 fifth is 1. 4 fifth plus something less than 1 fifth is going to be less than 1. The answer is A. On the way, on the way actually is to do it out with a common denominator, so which is very straightforward. Also no big deal as we know. 5 is, a, 5 is a prime number, 11 is a prime number, so their common denominator here is going to be the product of 5 and 11. So we take the first fraction, multiply it by 11 over 11 to convert the bottom into 55. We take the second fraction, multiply it by 5 over 5. There we go, voila, we have the common denominator of 55. On the top we get 44 plus 10. 44 plus 10 is 54, so we have 54 over 55, which of course is less than 1. Either way, it's not a big deal. Number 2. Number two. Problem number two is the same situation. We're not going to we're not going to compute the quantity. We're not going to compute the quantity. These questions are called quantitative comparison, which is why we write down the word computation and we cross it out for emphasis. Problem number two is the same exact scenario. We're not going to compute everything because if you if you sit there and try to compute everything. It will take you forever. Here's what the problem says. It's 86% is the percentile. 1.9 cubed, 1.9 cubed versus 1.99 cubed versus 1.9999 squared. Well, 1.9, 1.9 is approximately 2. So it's approximately 2 cubed is what it is. This quantity is approximately 2 cubed. 1.99999 is approximately 2 as well. The fact that this 2 is actually closer to the real number than this 2 is really doesn't matter because we're comparing 2 squared. We're comparing 2 squared versus 2 cube. Of course, 2 cube is bigger. The answer is B. Number 3. Question number 3.
in question number 3, the percentile is 81, we are given a number line, here is our here is our negative 1, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, here is our 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, here is our 1, 1, 2, 3, and 4, here is our 2, and we have shown two quantities on the number line, quantity x we are shown here, right here, x. As we can see, this x appears, this is 0, this is negative 1, so this is negative 3 quarters, this is negative 3 quarters. And then we are shown a quantity of y, which is right here one tick mark from, from one, which means it is one and one quarter. It is one and one quarter, or if you like, it is five quarters. This is our y. And we are being asked to compare, we are being asked to compare midpoint of x and y versus one third. Go ahead and do it yourself. I should not have done everything that I just did here because I think I almost finished half the work already. You, you have to figure out the value of x and y yourself, but that's what it is. X, x turns out to be negative 3 quarter, y turns out to be 1 and 1 quarter, which is same as 5 quarters. They're asking us to compare the midpoint of x and y versus 1 third. I'll give you two seconds to pause and unpause the video in the event that you, that you want to do it yourself. Well, here we go. So there are two ways we can go about it. One way is to actually look, just simply look at the picture and count the tick marks. Other way to actually do it out academically, and they talk about the midpoint in x and y. Midpoint simply means the average of the two. Midpoint simply means the average of x and y. x we know is negative 3, y we know is 5. Now keep in mind that when we say negative 3, it's negative 3 quarters. So we're counting in the unit, we're counting in quarters. There are, there we have negative 3 quarters and a 5 quarters. I'm being lazy. So there are quarters. At the final answer, whatever it is, it's going to be number of quarters. You understand? And if you take the average of it, negative 2 and 5 is over 2 is going to be 2 over 2, which is 1, but 1 what? 1 quarter. 1 quarter. The whole thing is being over quarter. So that's what it is. This is 1 quarter, which you will see in the picture. Just count. From x to y, we're going to go. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we start from here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. You see, we meet right here. And this point right here is 1 quarter. So the average of x and y is one quarter, one quarter versus one third. Of course, a third is more than a quarter. The answer is B. I think I made too much fuss about nothing at all. It's a simple problem. You can tell how simple the problem is, a given problem is, by looking at the percentile. Number four. What I meant to say is that sometimes we get something wrong because we misread something or if you have trouble understanding something and uh, you look at the percentile and the percentile is very high, then you know you're missing something obvious. It's not supposed to be that difficult. Do you understand? Number four. In number four, we're given a picture here. And we're being asked to compare. We are told that this is x and this is y. And we're being asked to compare x versus y. x versus y. This is a very silly question. 77% of the people got it right. It's a very silly question. Why is it a silly question? For two reasons. x versus y. Okay, watch what happens. Column A, column B. Is there any way to figure out the value of x given what is given to us? We are given a triangle, we are told nothing at all, nothing else, nothing else appears in the picture here. We are simply told that we have a triangle, what's the value of this angle? To which our answer will be, how the hell do I know? In order to figure out the value of one of the angles of the triangles, we have to know at least, at the minimum, the sum of the other two triangles, if not the two triangles, if not the two angles individually, if not the two angles individually, we at least have to know the sum, sum of these two angles, this guy and this guy, this, this, this angle and that angle. We do not know the sum of these two angles. How can we figure out the x? Well, since this x we cannot figure out, there is no point looking at the y. Absolutely no point at the y. Looking at second column would be sheer waste of time. What difference does it make? Even if we could figure out, even if we could figure out y, what would be the bloody point of wasting our time trying to figure out y? What are we going to compare it against? 
as long as you as long as you can determine that one of the two columns cannot be determined as long as you can deter, as long as you can come to a, a certain conclusion that one of the quantities in one of the two columns cannot be calculated the answer is d what do you want to compare it against it cannot be determined the fact the fact that in this particular case this quantity is also unknown the fact that this quantity is also unknown is a moot point is a moot point you understand? That's purely for theoretical. We we discuss this purely for theoretical reasons. It has no practical implication. A moot point is a point which has no practical implication. It is discussed purely for the theoretical reasons. We could talk about whether or not we can calculate why, but it will be a sheer waste of time. It will be purely for theoretical reason. It has no practical implication because even if we could figure out, as we said before, even if we could figure out the value of y, which we cannot here, but even if we could, the answer would still remain d because what the hell are we going to compare it against? This quantity cannot be computed. We can, there is no way to figure out x. The answer is d. Number five. Number five. Now, when did we learn moot point? Oh, blast it. I left my. Oh, no, it's right here. I thought I left my vocabulary list. I have this thing in the index card here, uh, alphabetically arranged by letters, and I'm going to look under the card for m and find out, tell you which day we learned moot point in our vocabulary lessons. Day number seven. Day number seven. Just type in GRE vocabulary words. GRE vocabulary words. Day number seven. You watch the videos and you will learn mood points and some other interesting words. Good words to know to improve your vocab to, to help you improve your vocabulary. Problem number five is a very straightforward and oh, silly question. 83% of people had no problem with it. What I, what I don't know is why the hell did the other 17% miss it? It's very simple. They want you to compare 7 and 1 fifth versus 7.02. Now I know the reason. Of course, we know the reason why the other 17% missed it. Not because, not because they could not understand it, they could not could do the math and so on and so forth. Now what I'm about to say could happen to anybody. It, can, it happens to the best of us. It happens to me. What happens is that when the problems are too simple, we tend to get a little cocky. You mustn't get cocky during the exam. I, it happens to me sometimes. It, it gets the best. Uh, they get everybody. And when you become too cocky, you say to yourself, this is too silly, I can do it. And then you become careless. And people end up misreading it. This says 7.02, not 7.2. This is 7.2. 7 and 1 fifth. 7 and 1 fifth is 7.2 versus 7.02, not 7.2. And 7.2 is greater. The answer is A. But if you misread it, you're going to end up picking C for the answer. Do you understand? You must pay attention. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.